this is about to switch gears a little bit, but keep what we just heard in mind. All right. All of this is conditioning. This is what America does. All about conditioning. All right. Watch this. According to uh, a research paper that was recently published to the Journal of the American Medical Association, Pediatrics, show that there has been a 389 percent increase in children receiving mastectomies from 2016 through 2019. I want to say that again. Children receiving mastectomies. Mastectomy. So the use mastectomy, that's not a word we use every day. It is. So she's about, to tell, you, she about to tell you what a mastectomy is. All right. CLA School of Law's Williams Institute published a study that found the number of transgender youth in America has doubled in just the past five years. That's what it's talking about. This is talking about sex changes, trans, transgenderism. Uh -huh, yep. Okay, go ahead. Come on, y'all. Come on, play the video. These statistics. You've got to realize that this is not an accident. This didn't just happen. This is very intentional and it's the consequence of this radical agenda that is being pushed on our kids. They're rejecting the existence of objective reality by rejecting this most fundamental truth of the differences between a biological male and female. Now, even as they're... Right. So they're rejecting what God said. God made them male and female. The hell right. is this? Okay, they're rejecting how things are supposed to be. Why? Because this, like she said, is not by accident. All right, this is a, about years and years of conditioning right. to the point where now in the last five years, the number of tr transgenders has now doubled. This don't make one okay, to and me. watch this next clip. I'm going to give it to you officers. Listen closely to this. To LADA's uh, George Gascon's soft on crime agenda and its potential risk to the safety of children. The Daily Mail finding thousands of convicted pedophiles in California accused of horrific crimes against kids are being released from jail after serving less than a year. Fox News contributor and former Democrat Leo Terrell lives in California, joins us right now. Leo, these people were convicted, uh, are convicted pedophiles. And because they, according to Gascon, because they were nonviolent felons in his estimation, they get to leave. Now stop. Now, what is what do you what do you think this is ushering in? That uh, what's it called? Those maps, those minor attracted people. Right. Mm, you gotta right. think about it. They said they're what releasing the them because their crime wasn't violent, but it was violent. You attacked a defenseless child right. sexually. This don't make but they're saying because they didn't punch them or suffocate them or murder them wow. that they should be able to walk free. Meaning Man, what? Can y'all hear me? They're, oh, is that Bishop? Uh, 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 Bishop, that's you? Who is that? Hey! Oh, Shalom, hey. Bishop. Hey. Most high Christ bless. Hey, Shalom, hey we, got, we got the Bishop. We got the bishop. Hey, drop that. All praise to the most high. Hey, we've been waiting for this, man. We've been waiting for this. All Thank you. Praises. Thank All you for coming uh, on today, Bishop. That's right. Yes, That's sir. Right. So, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Bishop. I said, my pleasure. All, All praise, praise to the All Father. Praises. All praise to the Father. So, what we want to do, um, brothers and sisters that have been watching and following Israel United in Christ throughout the years, all praise to the most high. Thank you for your continued support. Um, if you, if you weren't hiding behind a rock, you have obviously seen that our bishop has been featured on you know, Comedy Hype, Bring it out. Uh, Black to Africa, right. uh, the Jason Whitlock Show, and various other outlets, giving all praise to the Most High God. Oh, praise, um, and I kind of just want to touch on that today, Bishop. And before we get into today's uh, interview, um, could y'all just play a clip, uh, a, little, a little clip from uh, Bishop's interview with Jason Whitlock? And I kind of just want to start there. All right, so play that clip, and then we'll dive into today's interview. Y'all pulling it up now? Protest oh. was planned. Okay, play that. You have the timestamp, correct? Stop. All right, come on, IT. Has to stop. Oh, and you know what, uh, Jason? A lot of people don't know this. Hey, can we put up on the screen the bus loads that occurred that came to the Barclay Center. If we can, can we put that on the screen, please? Please. Um, I don't know if you can see this, Jason. Can you see it? If we can move that oh, over. Oh, no, I think that's something different. That, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to speak on this. While we were there, yeah. we saw busloads of these so-called rabbis. Their agenda was to uh, surround the Barclay Center. 
So when they saw us, we saw them, they took off and went to Crown Heights. Their goal, just like when they had those eight uh, Jewish people with the anti-Semitic shirts, no anti-Semitism, these guys were going to surround the Barclays Center and do a campaign against Kyrie Irving. Nobody knows that, but we know that. But when they saw us, the warriors and the soldiers of God, that's right. right. They took off running and went to Crown Heights. All right, right, pull off the clip, pull off the clip. All right, let's bring the bishop back in the in the picture. So uh, the people want to know, Bishop, why now, Bishop? Uh, Did you have any type of idea that Isaiah United in Christ would receive this type of response? And what a coincidence, Bishop. Why now? Why? Why? Why now? Why did you pull the trigger now? Hey, the Most High is a supreme chess player. This is chess, not checkers, niggas. Right. That's what right. <laughs> you gotta realize. Bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what was gonna go on, but we knew, cause remember, we initially were not gonna do anything. Right. And cause I got the phone call, ah, let's not do anything in there. So I'm in sleep, I'm, I'm hello. Bishop Kenai is calling me, yeah, let's cancel it. It's not gonna be worth anything, it's not. I'm like, oh, okay. Hang up the phone. Then when I finally wake up, I, I shake my head and say, what's going on? I cut on the TV and I see anchormen attacking Kyrie Irving left and right. I said, wait a minute. I called. I said, wait a minute. The attack is still going on. I said, you thought they laid down. They didn't lie down. I said, we going to war. That's we right. going to war. <laughs> That's we right. War. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> all praises, all and praises. Them little mamses, them mamses, they pulled up in that bus, and I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for one of these big uh, talk show hosts to say we a liar. I'm waiting for the Jewish community to say we are lying. Then we're gonna pull out the footage. And you know, right, we, we got receipts. Don't show everything yet. Don't show everything. Right. Just wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> so Bishop, let me ask you this uh, now. Being on the stage, you've done many great interviews already. You know, we've, uh, as an organization, had exposure, but obviously not to this magnitude. Um, now, interviewing with the likes of Comedy Hype, uh, Jason Whitlock, and also being in uh, many notable out- uh, news outlets like New York Times, you know, these uh, different newspapers and whatnot. How do you handle, as the leader of this organization, how do you handle that notoriety? I don't even think about it. I don't think about it. You know, like Zephaniah, can y'all read Zephaniah? Is it 319 or 39? Yes, sir. Read that for me. Read that. And and when y'all get it, just let me know. I remember talking with a couple of brothers, and the brothers were saying, hey, maybe all Israel's going to come together. I said, if they're in their right mind, they'll understand that this is war and organize and follow our lead. I said, but if not, I said, you're going to see if they're quiet and have nothing good to say or don't even respond to us and what we've done, because a win for us is a win for them. A win for them is a win for us. That's That's what a true leader understands. But a wannabe doesn't understand it. They see it like we're the enemy because the Lord showed us favor to do this one thing and get some quote unquote recognition they see us as the enemy. Can y'all read Zephaniah 319, please? Read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3 and verse 19. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Right. Now, we know that's really talking about when we get to the other side. Right. But we can glean a little bit from that and understand that the Most High is going to give us that fame for a short time being. But again, back to the five-foot dude. I saw, they called me today. Hey, there's a short dude talking about something called polygyny. What is polygyny? I don't know. I know what polygamy is. Right. I've never heard of polygyny. What the but hell? let me explain that in brief, what I made reference to. Can y'all get 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2, please? Bring it Y'all all right? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband the, render unto so the wife. the Bible says, let every man have his own wife, and every woman, every woman 
have her own husband. There's no polygamy. There's no polygyny there. (laughs) So Acts 529, please. Now I got a question for the five foot, four, eight, whatever height he is. (laughs) Listen, you know, I used to make a joke that I don't talk to people under six feet. (laughs) Oh, damn. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. Read that. Acts 529. The book of Acts. Chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So God spoke through the apostle Paul. Let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. Now, should I obey God or some five foot one inch dude who's a loner on YouTube? Bring it out. We I ought to obey God. Listen, I'm going to obey what the Bible says. So that's, that's right. right. That's you know, that's right. Here's the argument. When you read throughout the Old Testament, you read about our forefathers having multiple wives. Not all of them. Adam didn't have multiple wives. Abraham didn't have multiple wives. Because that thing with with, uh, Keturah, with uh, Hagar, that was Sarah's suggestion. Then Hagar had to go. Okay? So Abraham had one. When Sarah died, he remarried a younger woman named Keturah. Isaac had one. Some of them are now saying, if you only have one, you're a homosexual. Well, Christ didn't have any. John the Baptist didn't have hey, any. Paul didn't have any. Right. So what are you trying to say? What's wrong with you, brothers? What's wrong with you now? Now, listen, good. Let's get what I'm about to say. When you read the Old Testament, like when you read about Solomon had a lot of wives. Many of the kings of Israel had a lot of wives. Our four, some of our forefathers had a lot of wives. What's the difference these dudes ask between then and now? Well, let me help you. Let help me help you. We were in our own land. Right. We were wealthy. We owned property. Again, we were in our own land, not in captivity. Now, when you get to the parts of captivity in the Bible, you won't read about our forefathers having multiple wives in captivity. Where are we today? In captivity. Right. Where was Paul? When he wrote 1 Corinthians 7, verse 2, in captivity. Yes, right. That's right. So what's wrong with us? Let's get our minds right. Let's focus. Let's follow the discipline, which is God's laws, statutes, and commandments. You better read I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings, but it is what it is. Right. I love all our people. And my prayer is that Israel can organize, get themselves together. Like I always say, if they stand beside us, we respect them. If they stand behind us, we protect us. We protect them. But if they stand in front of us, against us, we're going to destroy you all. That's, in the right. That's, right. That's all I got. All praise yes, to the Most High Bishop. So, you know, obviously it's the Spirit of the Most High that allowed this to happen. And you see people now, not just positive. Now we're seeing our own people come out the woodworks and try to, try to hinder this. So right. my question, follow-up to that first question would be, What's what do you see next five, next ten years? The the mm. way the climate, the way the climate is moving now. What what do you see, Bishop? Well, within the next five to ten years, uh, Israel's going to grow between the next from now to the next three years. Israel's going to grow exponentially. I don't know exponentially. Is that the word? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to be an increase amongst our people believing. But what's going to happen after that? Tribulation is going to come. Mm-hmm. Tribulation. And let me. And here's another message for you loner Israelites, for you Israelites that um, who only stay on YouTube, on the computer, when they come for us, they're coming for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Understand that. And they don't even right. care if you teach all nations. The fact that you're teaching with the Israelites is a problem. Right. They're the, let me give you an example, a real example. Martin Luther King Jr., they said, that's our man, that's our man. As long as he keeps with that foolish Christian rhetoric, he's good. He's in our pocket. Mm-hmm. But the moment he goes to the left or goes to the right, there's a problem. What did he do? Martin Luther King said, I fear that I have uh, integrated my people into a burning house. And what did he do sometime after that? Remember, he started to talk and communicate with Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wait a minute. 
Malcolm X is a fire starter. Mm -hmm. Do you know the amount of people that follow Martin Luther King? Imagine if him and Malcolm X got together. Mm. You know what kind of problem we get? They said, kill them both. Kill Message. them both. They assassinated Malcolm X, then came King. So what can we glean from that? You brothers and sisters out there who got always something evil to say about us, when they come for us, they're coming for you. You're gonna learn regardless today. if you teach all nations, regardless if you buy yourself with a dirty head wrap, they don't <laughs> give a damn. You teaching that we're the Israelites. You're teaching that truth. They're going to come for you. Right. Understand that. All praise from the side. Um, Real quick, so we can kind of go away from that real quick, Bishop. Um, Now, I'll, obviously, everybody was tuning yesterday, all right, for your uh, – no, no, the day before yesterday – for your interview with Jason Whitlock. Uh, excellent interview. All praises that uh, he gave us that opportunity. Um, mm. So it was a point in the interview where it got to the discussion of his term racial idolatry or the, you know, the, 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 their term um, in, in, that, in, that, in that avenue or in that industry of racial idolatry. I, I wanted to give you the opportunity, Bishop, to expound on that and, you know, kind of talk about what he meant by it, but Put some sense to that for the people out there watching for us, Bishop. It, it took me a few minutes to understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. He was trying to say that we, have, as black people, quote unquote, we suffer from racial idolatry, meaning we, we, we worship our blackness, our skin complexion. And that's why, if you notice, I showed a photo of Sammy Sosa and Vibes Cartel. Right. You remember right. that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sent uh, um, Jason Whitlock a tweet today. Can y'all go on Instagram or Twitter and pull up what I sent him? I don't know if y'all are able to do that. Yes. Uh, yeah, we got those photos, Bishop. You just want to pull up the photos? Or oh, yeah, the... just for the photos. Yeah, yes, we got yes. the photos. Put those up. Put those up. <clears throat> y'all ready? All right. No, 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 no. What I posted. I posted the photos. Do me a favor. One of y'all go to Bishop's uh, Twitter, and the other one look for the photo, okay? We're getting it ready, Bishop. Mm -hmm. All praise. Hey, can we read while they're looking for it? 2 Maccabees 4.15? Yes, sir. Racial idolatry. Our people don't worship blackness. They don't worship the brown complexion. What's that expression? If you're black, get back. If you're brown, <laughs> stick around. And if you're white, you are right. Uh, that was the old expression back in the day. I don't know if they still say it today, but uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 4, who do we really worship? Verse 15, read that for me, please. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 15, not setting by the honors of their fathers, but like in the glory of the Grecians, best of all. During the time of the Greeks, our people gave up Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and started to love the Greeks. We love the Greeks. Read the next verse. Verse 16. By reason whereof, so a calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers, whose custom they followed so earnestly, and unto whom they desired to be like in all things. That's racial idolatry. We worship the white man so much, it says we desire to be like them in all things. We wanted our hair like their hair, our eyes like our, their eyes. Uh, we wanted to dress like them, talk like them, eat like them. We wanted to be them. Right. And I didn't, I was not able to convey that to our brother, Jason Whitlock, because of time. But I think he got the message. That's why I had to tweet him today. I said, tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> I see got the at? pictures. We got it? Okay. Hey, uh, Bishop, they got it. They about to put it up for you. All right. Let's put it on the screen, y'all. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're serious. Brothers, put, put it on the screen. So you have to download it so you don't have it. Wow. IT. Lord, gosh, man. IT, wow. man. IT. Come on, IT. now, dog. I but, thought New York was bad. Uh, hey, New see. York, I'm going to give y'all a break. Damn. You got Tallahassee with that. Ah, Bishop. Oh, man. gosh. Don't do us like that. Uh, <laughs> come on, IT. Where's the video? Do y'all have it or no? How about the pictures? Just show the pictures. Show the pictures. Okay, here we go, Bishop. Here we go, Bishop. Are you able to see that? 
No, I don't see nothing yet. Bishop saying he can't see it. Can we just go to a it. screen where you can see it? Hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Bishop. I know. Damn. I'm hurt. Let's do this. This is the little, hey, hey, pause it right there. Okay, all praises. That is world renowned Kirk Franklin. Damn. Kissing and licking the hand of decrepit Billy Graham. This is racial, I, this is what we just read in 2 Maccabees 4, verse 15 and 16. We love the white man. We kiss the white. They will suck the dirt from between the white man's toes. Damn. Now give Damn. me the next image. Give me that next image. The other one, the first one, brothers. One. Come on, the first one. There it is. Yes. Look at this. Look at this. This is Revelation 13, 7. We love the white man, especially as Jesus. Can we read Revelation 13, 7, please? The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to the him, the him in this verse is the white man. The him in this verse is the white man. It started with Rome, Spain, and Portugal. Read on. And to overcome them. They overcame us. And power was given him over all kindreds. And, and power was given him over all kingdoms. Once they overcame us, they did what? They enslaved us. They tortured us. They made us work for free. Okay, read. In tongues, in nations, and all that dwell. took over every nation. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Who is everybody worshiping? Because it sure ain't me. It ain't right. sure nobody black. It ain't nobody Chinese. Nope. It ain't nobody Arab. It ain't nobody African. It ain't nobody Filipino. It's the white man. Everybody worships the white man. Read. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lambs, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now read seven and eight together. Read it and read it right, please. Yes, sir. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Right. So it says everyone would worship him. That, that's not hard to figure out. Okay. That's not hard. Okay. Now, Jason Whitlock, my brother, I'm not, I'm not, he, he asked me to be uh, uh, respectful, so I'll definitely try to be respectful. I can <laughs> yes, be sir. cute and kind and all of that. He made a statement. What did he say? He said in school, he, was, he, did, we, he wasn't taught that black people, history started with slavery. And I'm like, huh? He said, we were taught that we were king. I'm like, well, what school did this brother go to? So that's when I asked him, well, who, what people are you? Where do you come from? What land is it? And what tribe? I want, and then you heard this. Mm -hmm. I'm not a biblical I said, scholar. I said, you see the pause? <laughs> see that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Bishop, um, overall, you know, he, he had his beliefs, obviously, the, the tone of the interview. Um, overall, how successful or unsuccessful or what are your what are your outlooks? What do you think, uh, you know, the people outside of Israel United and Christ saw out there? What What is your take on how the interview went? Oh, I believe that the interview was guided by the Holy Spirit yes, and the people on the outside looking in. They believe because I not only read scripture, mm -hmm. we showed visuals. So, you know, what we're talking about. Right. Um, I know Jason Whitlock did a cleanup the next uh, segment. He had two Christians. I asked him, hey, bring me on the show with the right. two Christians. Bring me on the show. Right. I'm going to show you how you do. I'm going to show you how it's done. <laughs> and Bishop, um, the next day, like you said, he bring on the two. But after that, that segment with you, they had, uh, his name was Delano Squires. Delano mm -hmm. Squires. He came on after you. And I, I watched it. Um, and I had, I wanted to give you a chance to kind of, go over what he said about your interview real quick. Um, he said, what is 
I'm sorry, the first one, it said, Delano Squires came on after you, Bishop. Um, and it says, what is your response to those saying being an Israelite is an ethnocentric religion? All right, so that's what they're trying to push. That's what they're trying to say about what we believe in. How would you uh, answer that or combat that? Now, me listening, it sounds like you're saying uh, ethno refers to ethnicity, right? Yes, sir. I mean, your race is talking about our race, right? Yes, sir. I'd say you are 100% correct. Mm -hmm. Get me Leviticus 26 and verse 45. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 45. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. So he said, I will remember the covenant of their ancestors, meaning Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's what he's talking about. So, yes, this is about a race of people. Right. That's what it is. Now, get Deuteronomy, no, get Luke 1, 68. Let's see what the New Testament says. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Of Israel. This is the same people in Leviticus 26, 45. Go ahead. For he have visited and redeemed his people. His people. His people. His people. His people is not all people. Right. All people on the planet Earth. We don't. Uh, no. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That horn of salvation is Christ for us, for us, for us. Who? Israel. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So this was prophesied since the world began from the time of Adam all the way up to now. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. See, we're going to be saved from my enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now, next verse is the point. Watch this. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Wait a minute. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those are our fathers. They're not the fathers of everybody on the planet. Right. Read. And to remember his holy covenant. Woo! So that goes back to Leviticus 26.45. So, yes, I say you're absolutely correct, brother, because that's what the Bible is about. The 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. All praises, and Bishop. You know that's right. <laughs> hey, uh, so, Bishop, so, Bishop, so, all praise to the Most High. I, um, that was excellent. That was an excellent explanation. So, after that, he went on to say, he went on to say this, that we, the Israelites, we focus more on being black more than the actual religion. So he says we focus on being more, it's more important to be black than follow the actual religion. How would you uh, respond to that, Bishop? Well, I'd say the ancient Egyptians were black too. And what happened to them? Bam. They all got wiped out. Can we read that in Isaiah, is it 43? Uh, I gave Egypt for your ransom, that one. Yes, sir, yes, sir. It might be 45, I can't remember. Y'all help me out. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Y'all all right? You got it, right? Yes. Isaiah 43 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43 and verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave thee Egypt for thy ransom. Wait, I gave Egypt. Read it right. Come on, brother. I got you, Bishop. This is the book right. of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 3. It says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Those are three black nations. God said he destroyed Egypt for us as a ransom, Ethiopia and Seba. Those are three black nations. God said, I'm wiping, I'm going to destroy their armies and all that. And he did that. Did he do it because we were black? No, but because of the covenant he made to us. Read that. Give me uh, uh, Exodus uh, 11 and 7. I think that's it. About the difference between Egypt. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know 
how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And the difference is not complexion because we were both black nations. Right. Right. The difference is the spirit within us that we're the Israelites and God made a covenant with our fathers. Right. Okay, Bitter not the Egyptians forefather, but our forefathers. That's that right. right there. <laughs> <laughs> all praises, all praises to the most high. Um, and obviously, you know, this is a simple question, but you know, they were, they kept going on the fact that this is all about racial idolatry and they, you're worshiping the skin more than the religion. So he asked the question, uh, for the Caucasians out there, he says, how does one repent from his whiteness? I, I found this, I was like this dude, this, this guy, but you know, Bishop, this is your, hey, he didn't, they didn't give you the opportunity to answer. So I want, I want to hear how you respond to that right there, Bishop. Well, number one, we, we know that amongst our people, give me numbers 118. We have what they call mulattoes. Uh, many brothers and sisters, even among us, have Caucasian mothers. Okay? Many of our people, especially amongst the Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, they have black or Indian fathers. Okay? When I say Indian, I'm referring to indigenous Indians, which are Israelites. Read Numbers 118. Watch this. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So your father determines your nationality, your race, your father. So, and I gave an example. I'll give an example. I could have, if, if I had sex with three different types of women, I could have sex with a black woman, a Chinese woman, and a white woman. Those children are my children. They may look different, but they're still mine. Right. The one, the black woman, her child will look black as I am black because we're both quote unquote black. Me and the Chinese woman, the child might come out with uh, Asian eyes somewhat. Might come out with a little straight hair, maybe. The one with the Caucasian may be extremely light. Might even look daggone white. Could pass for white, depending on how God ma uh, manages it. But those are all three Israelites. Those are three Israelites. Those are Israelites, okay? And in case that's hard for you to understand, audience, you could plant an apple tree in America, apple seed in Russia, apple tree in Saudi Arabia. They're all apple trees. They might right. look a little different. They might, they might even taste a little different, but they're all apple trees. The seed is the seed, okay? So now, it ain't about that so much because there have been... People that we thought, like there's a show on, I believe it's uh, Amazon. It's called Little White Lies. I don't know if y'all saw it. You saw it? No, that? sir. No, sir. Okay. It's, a, it's about a so-called Jewish girl. She grew up in this family. But when you look at her photos, she always looked a little different. Her lips were thicker than everybody else's. Her nose was a little broader than everybody else's. And her hair was a little bit, it was like wavy, kinky wavy, but nobody said nothing. She would ask about her parents and all of that. One day, as she got older, her mother confessed she had an affair with a black man. And she was born. And she met her father. If y'all get a chance, just look at it. Yes, sir. Now, she could pass for white. When you look at the movie, I mean, the documentary, she could pass, but you do see a little something there. That everybody saw, but nobody wanted to talk about. Mm. So I said that to say this. There are, like when the Bible says we are scattered in all nations, it means that. There will be people that could pass for Caucasian. That will be Israelites. But guess what? Their spirit must align with what this, read Romans 8, 16. Here's, what's going, here's what must happen. This is the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, when the Bible talks about the spirit itself, it's referring to the spirit of the Lord in this holy Bible. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when you read the Bible, the history, the prophecies about what would happen to us, the Israelite, the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will say, this is me. This is me, so regardless of what you look like. 
and they're going to come in. They're going to love our people. We're going to love them back. That's right. But if your spirit ain't right, mm-mm, mm-mm. Just for a few. Now, what about Esau? Remember Romans 9, 13. <laughs> what about those legitimate Caucasians? Bring it out. Not what? only is mama Caucasian, but daddy Caucasian. What? Everybody Caucasian. <laughs> Caucasian. I made up a new word. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now, what you going to do with that with, with John 3, 16, for God so loved the world? God loves Jacob. Uh -oh. But he what? hates Esau. What? Who's Esau? The father of all Caucasians. Mm -hmm. I can't change it. I didn't write this. I didn't set the chain of events throughout history. Only the Lord did. Yes, sir. Okay. And oh, here's one. Hebrews 12. Mm -hmm. About he cried for uh forgiveness. Hebrews 12 is a 16 or 18. I forgot. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or for oh, excuse me, or profane person as Esau. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. God don't care about your tears. Cry me a river. Esau cried. <laughs> God, God. The Lord said, I don't give a damn about that. Right. Your tears. What is this? The world's smallest violin. The Lord don't care about that. Right. You cry, cry, cry. Hey, it, it sounds harsh, but that's the reality of the Bible. Yes, sir. I can't change it, brothers and sisters. Yes, I didn't sir. write it. I didn't orchestrate it. All yes, oh, praise to the Most High, Bishop. Uh, just in closing, just two last questions, uh, mainly, you know, for the people. Uh, your, your works, Bishop, you know, you've been over the, in the truth for over 30 years. Uh, to see it start small, and that's why the topic today was this truth ain't small no more, okay? Right. Uh, to see it start small, to see where the Most High is bringing it now, you know, just a moment of your reflection. I, I know myself, I love to hear that. I know the viewers out there would like to hear that. You know, uh, could you walk us through that, uh, how you feel right now seeing how the Most High is, is uh, pushing this truth out the four corners? I'm, I'm definitely grateful that the Lord has given me just a little, excuse me, I'm sorry, just a little more time to uh, <laughs> a little more time to see the growth of of Israel. If we can read, is it Matthew thirteen about the mustard seed? I haven't read. Yes, it. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Israel's going to grow because even what we see now is nothing compared to what it's going to be. That's right. Actually, uh, Luke chapter remember. okay thirteen and verse eighteen. Then said he, unto what is the kingdom of God like, and whereunto shall I resemble it? Where it, you at? Uh, Luke 13, 18 and 19. Oh, Luke. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. It's a, it is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden. And it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. Mm -hmm. I want the one that says it starts off the smallest. Where's that one? He said, wait, let me. It's, oh, it's the same parable. Same parable. Mark, let me Matthew look at Matthew. 13, 31. Mark 4. Oh, yeah. It's Mark? Mark 4 and 31. Mark 4 and 31. Okay, all praises. All right. all right. This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 31. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up. And becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Right, all nations gonna lodge under us, under our shadow. So it started off small. Like I said, when IUIC was started in 2003, me, Bishop Kenai, and one other. And that was it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And now to see the growth, I've, I praise the Lord that He's allowed me to live this long. I said, Lord, just a little bit longer, please, just a little bit longer. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see the magnanimous, magnanimous works because I see in the brothers and the sisters strength, growth, and I know it's, they're going to take this truth further than, the, than where the Lord has allowed me to take it. That's so I know right. it's going to grow more and more and more. Exploits going to be done on this earth. That's and when right. a certain point of growth is reached, tribulation will Come, mm, yes, sir. Well, I know that's going to happen. And um, just words of encouragement 
This will be the last question, Bishop. Words of exhortation to the brothers and sisters out there uh, to continue in the walk. Um, and then uh, we'll sign off for the day. Yes, sir. Hey, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, so we can read that. Yes, sir. This is the encouragement for you and I and all Israel. That's right. I know some of you are teetering on the fence. Even our brother Jason Whitlock, who said his son, who he loves, a brother he loves like a son, is an Israelite. And I know he's going to look at the industry and say, hey, Pops, what Bishop said is right. Mm. And I know, hey, Jason oh. Whitlock did an experiment, and I brought it up. He put Revelation 2-9 and tweeted. That's all he did, Revelation mm -hmm. 2-9. All his constituents attacked him. Right. He's like, wait a minute. I didn't say, I just tweeted a stuff shot. I didn't say what it means or nothing. Just like they did with Kyrie. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know it's on his mind. I know it's on his mind. Damn. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The we Lord are holy people. We are that holy people. People, right? The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Wait, does it say above or equal to? Does it say uh, below or uh, equal to? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. See, this is what they call that supremacy. Right. Black supremacy. But guess what? When white folks were saying that they are the, what did they say? The Aryan race or the, uh, what's the word they say? You're right, Bishop. The supreme race. Right. Mm -hmm. And so-called Jewish people say they are the chosen ones. Nobody had a problem with it. It was all good. It was all gravy. But now that we say and realize we are the chosen people, according to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Did you read the whole verse? Yes, sir. Read I'll read it again. I just love the way it sounds. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now you got some of our people afraid of that thing. They're afraid to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Look at this one. First Peter 2 verse 9 and 10. I'm going to show you historically what happened. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. This is the book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are the chosen generation. We are the royal priesthood. We are the holy nation. We are the peculiar people who should show forth the praises of God. And you know because, that's right. because God called us out of darkness. He called us out of sin. That's what that darkness is. A sinful, vile, degenerate, uh, perverse life. He called us all out. Now we're in the truth now. Watch the next verse. Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Which when it says, which in time past were not a people, guess what? There was a time when they said, you black people are three-fifths of a man. Right. You are not a man. We had to walk around with, 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 with paper that said, I am a man. Mm -hmm. I am a man. <laughs> I am a man. Lord That's what happened. Read it again. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Now we realize that we the people of God. Yes, sir. We yes, the sir. people of God. Right. Read. Read. But are now, I'm sorry, excuse me, but which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Because during the time of chattel slavery, we didn't have no mercy. No mercy from God or man. Right. Right. Now we have, the Lord said, I'm going to give you mercy now. Because of what his son, the Christ, oh, let me say it this way. What Yahawashai did, the mercy has come now. I got a lot of haters online. Oh, he don't say Yahweh. He don't speak the Hebrew. One group saying he got to say Yeshua. Okay. Yeshua died for us. You happy now? Oh, he didn't say Yahweh Shai. Okay. Yahweh Shai died for us. Mm -hmm. Now we've obtained mercy. Right. I hope everybody understand that. And, and I got to explain this. The reason I speak in English, the Jesus Christ, God, the Lord, is so that all the people who have never heard of this truth understands who I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. Right. That's why, like it says in Isaiah, get that for me, get that for me. Isaiah 28, come on. 
They, these brothers that want to talk Hebrew and you barely speak English. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Stop the hate. This is the book. Bon- <laughs> Go ahead, read them. the yes. Bible says, gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. That's my prayer. But with all the hate, the Lord got to move a lot of people out the way that's pushing the hate. And that's a lot of these leaders over the congregation. They push hate, hate, and more hate. Read that. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. That's the prophecy. He spoke to us in English. I learned in English. I speak English. Yes, sir. I'm not, multi- I'm not bilingual. I'm sorry, I'm not. I don't know Hebrew f- fluently. I just know a few key words. Mamza. That's us. I just know a few key words. That's it. Okay, go ahead. What are you going to say, Cap? I was about to say, hey, Bishop, none of them know Hebrew fluently. Right. right. So, you know, uh, no. if, if we're being honest, Never. if we're being mm-hmm. honest out here. So, hey, all praise to the most, our Bishop. Uh, definitely thankful you came on. Hey, come on, IT. <laughs> Say, IT, dude, they ain't dropping no. Come on now. I ain't doing nothing. <sighs> shame, shame, shame. Hey, but all praise to the most high. Hey, Bishop, before you go, what we normally do on Writings on the Wall, we normally vote for our favorite panelists. All right, but today, Bishop, they tell you, you won that. You won for, oh, for life. That's right. right. So all That's praise right. to the most high, Bishop yeah. McDaniel. Hey, let's get ready for uh, FCN, Captain Zakar, Captain Severius. Hey, and with that, hey, keep us in your prayers. And with that, we say shalom. 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 All, all praise. Thank you so much. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.